Who is the wealthy colonial senior citizen embodying the archetype of an 80s horror villain? The Truth About Colonial Linden Extra, Cornelius Hatfield Jr. Tonight's matchup versus... It's the 1760s, Elizabethtown, New Jersey. A man of lineage from a founding family of the East Jersey Colony has continued his family's prosperity, attaining much land in the colony. Owning vast amounts of land in Elizabethtown track, running the city's largest orchard and cider mill in what's today's Linden, New Jersey. Hey, that's where I'm from. And a major import-export player in the New World. Doing so well, he established a large mansion near the Elizabeth River. Already a man of status, being from an original family and his father being a French and Indian War hero and city alderman, Cornelius Hatfield Jr. liked the status quo. Tensions in the colonies were rising, then at the age of 65, boom, American Revolution. He didn't like that, it wasn't good for business. Cornelius at advanced age picks up his expensive rifle and sword and fights for the king. He quickly made a name for himself by rooting out many of his patriot neighbors. He carried out several raids and men in the middle of the night throughout the conflict. His reputation preceded the boogeyman. On the battlefield, he seemed to have a knack for butchering his enemies and was lured to have individually killed more men than any other British officer, regular or provincial, during the conflict. He was extremely vengeful and violent, carrying out his Tory views far beyond anything seen by other New Jersey volunteers. So much so, notoriously brutal officers like Major Tarleton and Captain John Gray Simcoe found him beyond the pale. That guy was scary. Beyond the hundreds of men who felt his wrath either through capture or carnage, he even was implicated in a cold-blooded murder of a business competitor, Mr. Ball. Hey, why not? After Washington was able to make Jersey untenable for the British forces, and they left for New York, Captain Hatfield's lands and possessions were seized. Now his fight wasn't for King alone, but for personal lands. These seizures against the Loyalists only elevated his ruthlessness. He was the first man to throw a torch to burn the Presbyterian Church down in Elizabeth in 1780. You know, the one where his father served as the alderman for 40 years? In one particularly brutal covert action, he and his cousin kidnapped also elderly statesman Isaac Winans and his son Isaac III from what is today's Linden. Hey, that's where I'm from. In their sleep during one of the worst snowstorms of the winter of 1780, and then immediately took them all the way to the Sugar House Prison in Lower Manhattan by sleigh across frozen Newark Bay and Hudson River. Winans, 65 years old, died the next day. Captain Hatfield was 69 at the time and won the award for toughest evil son of a bitch of 1780. He seemed to have a habit of having one or more of his prisoners die before reaching incarceration. You know, being Linden's first psychopath and all. His surviving random chronicle diary found from the time includes a thought about Hatfield and describes him as most horrifyingly malicious. Near the end of the war, he escapes to Britain to avoid prosecution for that pesky murder rap, only to return a couple years later. Yes. He returns it a couple years later. That Cornelius is a bad Promptly gets arrested and beats a murder charge to the terms of the Treaty of Paris. Shamelessly staying in Elizabethtown, he dies there in 1795 at the age of 86. 